All right, today we're going to talk about the shooting of two police officers in Los Angeles and how the right is responding to the attack. And I'm also going to talk about how conservatives should be re reacting to these incidents and also how we should deal with Black Lives Matter as a whole. It's going to be great. Hello, 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 and welcome again to another Breaking Conservatarian broadcast where we prefer truth over narrative and principles over personalities. Uh, with me, Jeff Charles, the realist conservatarian in the conservatarian space. And I'm glad to be back with you. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I've been dealing with some issues. <laughs> um, I was in bed pretty much every day because of really severe back pain. And some of you guys were, were uh, weighing in and helping me as far as uh, giving me advice on what to do to make it feel better. But I've, I've dealt with chronic back pain, you know, since my early 20s when I was in a car accident. And, but this was the worst it had ever been. So hopefully I don't ever have to deal with that again because it wasn't very pleasant. So uh, I, I did get to catch up on a, lot of, on a lot of shows that I wanted to binge, though, because I couldn't really do a lot of walking. Like I could, I could barely shuffle my way to the bathroom or to go to the kitchen to get something to eat. It, it, it was pretty bad, but it's a lot better now. I still have some pain. Um, I can't stand for too long, but it, it's, it's getting a lot better. So uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully I never have to go through that again because it, it was not pleasant. And anybody else who uh, has dealt with chronic back pain knows exactly what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and dive in and um before i before i get we get going here i'm just go ahead and do the lss right now do the like share and subscribe like share and sus subscribe please it helps me out a lot and we can you know get get more get this in front of more more eyes um so i'm sure a lot of you have already heard about what happened um in Compton. I, I said Los Angeles, but it's actually in Compton, which is in the uh, greater Los Angeles area. And, um, you know, we heard about the shooting where uh, some guy just ran up on two police officers while they were in their vehicle and opened fire and left them in critical condition. Thank God that they're alive and hopefully they'll, they'll pull through. Um, as of this recording, I'm not sure exactly how they're doing, but it, it the indications seem to suggest that they might pull through. So uh, definitely keep them in, in your prayers. But uh, before I really get started on this, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the, the uh, one of the news reports from KTLA. So uh, take a look. We are still waiting on an update this morning, but we have seen many deputies here uh, throughout the morning. You can see some of them waiting here outside of the emergency room. Uh, they are still looking for this suspect as well, and we do have video that shows what happened. We'll show that to you now. A man is seen walking towards the officer's SUV or the deputy's SUV. Investigators tell us it seems the suspect was going to pass them, then turned and fired multiple shots while the two were parked. This was just before 7 o'clock last night. The suspect then ran off. Now, this was near the Blue Line Metro Station on the 100 block of East Palmer. Um, we're told the deputies were working with the department's Transit Services Bureau. A 24 year old male deputy and a 31 year old female deputy were both hit. The deputies were taken here to St. Francis Medical Center and were conscious when they got here. They both did have surgery, and as of the latest, they are both in critical condition. We're told the female deputy is a wife and mother of a six year old son, and both were fairly new to the department, only sworn in 14 months ago. As for the suspect, still on the loose, and there is not a detailed description of him at this time. Uh, the sheriff spoke out after last night's shooting. These are real people doing a tough job, and uh, it just shows uh, just the dangers of the job in the blink of an eye. Seeing somebody just walk up and just start shooting on them, it, it's, uh, it pisses me off. It dismays me at the same time, and I, there's no pretty way to say it. Protesters also showed up at the hospital last night. According to the sheriff's department, they blocked the emergency room entrance and exit and were yelling anti-law enforcement rhetoric. Uh, two arrests were made. One man who failed to disperse and a member of the media. She has since been released and said she will make comments later. Now, back here live, obviously a really difficult situation for sheriff deputies uh, waiting to hear about their fellow deputies out here. Uh, they are asking anyone with any information to contact the sheriff's department. Uh, the FBI has also asked 
or said they are willing to help with his investigation if need be. But on that, uh, once again, we are seeing quite a few deputies out here in support. That's okay, so you, you saw what happened there. You saw the, the footage um, of the attack and um, the, the, the remarks from Sheriff Alex Villanueva. And um, before I really get started on this, though, I have to point to something. They, there's something in that report that kind of bugged me. Like, they kind of tried to whitewash uh, what the protesters were doing at the hospital, the one that, that were there that were protesting as the um, officers are there right, you know, currently right now. But the, the people on the footage were, weren't just, they weren't just yelling anti and anti-law enforcement rhetoric. These protesters were yelling, we hope they die. And they were blocking ambulances from getting into the hotel. Uh, the sheriff's department even had to issue a statement telling them to stop blocking the ambulances from getting in because this is going to affect more people, not just uh, police officers. But, I mean, obviously this is disgusting. It's reprehensible. These protesters, the ones that were, that were doing these chants, sick, disgusting. Um, I know you probably can't arrest them for it, but the person who did the shooting should be thrown under, under, under the jail, obviously. And as of now, as according to the report, uh, they haven't yet caught him yet. They, well, they haven't caught him yet. So, but when they do, I mean, I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that they throw the book at him because I mean, you, you guys know me, you know, I'm, I'm, I can be pretty hard on police, especially the bad ones. I'm not part of the back to blue, no matter what crowd, um, but I do also recognize that the majority of police officers are decent folks just trying to do their job. Nobody just deserves to be shot just sitting in their car. And, and these two officers, uh, one was male and one was female. The female is a mother of a six-year-old child. And, um, you know, it's just, with the way things are right now, it's, it's just incited so much tension. And um, for this to happen, and they had only been on the force for about 14 months, so just a little over a year, and then this happens to them. So um, hopefully, again, uh, hopefully, um, hopefully they will pull through, and um, and hopefully we don't see uh, more of this. I mean, we've seen you know violence in cops, you know, you know, over the the past you know few years or so. Um, so while I always talk about bad police who mistreat members of the black community and and white people too. I don't want to forget that cops are in danger as well, um, even if they aren't doing anything wrong. Um, so we don't know what the motivation of, of the shooter was. We, we don't know if he actually identifies with the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, we don't know if he was just radicalized by all of the anti-police sentiment that we're seeing out there today that's being promoted by the media and by the Democrats. Um, and by the, the National Black Lives Matter organization as well. I mean, I, I do want to take an honest look at the organization and at the movement as well. And I've been meaning to do a video like this for a while to really dig into what Black Lives Matter is. And um, as people who want to be the adults in the room, which is what I always say that we should be as conservatives because we know that the far left is not going to do it. The ones who want to be the adults in the room. And this would also even include uh, liberals, people on the left who just aren't down with all the, the wacky progressive Marxist stuff. I mean, we, we people like us need to be the adults in the room. So I think we need to be able to take an honest look at this organization instead of just buying into the hype and buying into the, um, the uh, really the, 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 the propagandizing that's gone on on both sides. I'm going to focus mainly on the right with this, though. Um, so it seems that uh, people are already linking this shooting to Black Lives Matter, obviously. Uh, we've got the, the usual suspects, you know, Matt Walsh, he posted a tweet saying that Black Lives Matter and their supporters in the Democrat par Democratic Party are directly responsible for this shooting. Funny, he, he didn't have that same energy when it came to, you know, Bernie Sanders and the shooting of the congressman, including Steve Scalise, who almost died. But, you know, I mean, it's 2020 and everybody has to be a hypocrite now these, nowadays. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, Mark Dice uh, always weighs in on this stuff and he talked about the people celebrating the, the shooting uh, at the hospital. Because not only were people saying that they hope that the officers die, they were celebrating the fact that he got shot. Again, uh, reprehensible, but... Again, there's you know more to the situation than it might seem. So um, then, of course, we have, we have Dan Bongino, which is disappointing because I actually kind of like Dan Bongino. I, I've never really had an issue with, with much of what he said before, um, but I haven't really been paying much attention to him over the past few months. So I, I don't know how he's weighing in on this stuff. But um, he basically put he 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 pulled out one of the tropes that has become very popular on the right, even though it's inaccurate. And it, it's not just inaccurate, but it's like blatantly inaccurate. But he says, uh, BLM, and this is on Twitter, he says, BLM is a Marxist terror group that uses violence and destruction to advance its racist agenda. 
They're a clear and present danger to liberty and freedom. Hashtag fact. Yeah, that, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> Uh, but this last tweet by uh, Bongino, it, it's not just him that, that says these things about Black Lives Matter. And uh, I, and some of these pundits, I give them the benefit of the doubt because I think that just, they're just repeating what they've been what they've been hearing other people say. I'd say that most of these people know nothing about the organization. They All they know is that the national organization is run by Marxists, which is true. And they've actually come out and said that they've been trained as Marxists. But these people don't really know that this has been co-opted by, by white, well, I take that back. They know that it's been co-opted by white progressives, but they don't really know the difference between the national organization and the local and the local chapters that you might see that, that use the name Black Lives Matter, but may not necessarily be affiliated with a national organization. They don't know the difference between that and the people who may not even be members of Black Lives Matter, um, but they're just the people who are there to peacefully protest police brutality. And there might be disagreements there on different issues, but these aren't people that are encouraging riots. So that's kind of what I want to deal with um, in this video. And there are two main tropes about the Black Lives Matter movement that the right would do well to abandon right now. Because remember, wh where I'm coming from here is I want to see more black people on the right. I want to see more black people uh, be able to come over to our side rather than you know, relying on the Democrats who really have no intention of doing anything for them because they don't have to. They, they know that they've got the black vote no matter what at the local, state, and federal level. So in that light, this is, this is kind of where I'm coming from. from. This, this is the overarching theme of what I'm saying here. If we want to see that happening, we need to abandon a lot of the talking points that we use about the black uh, community. And there are two, again, two tropes that you see a lot on the right when it comes to Black Lives Matter. And if we're, and for the people who are actually serious about this, serious about the objective of getting more black people to come over to our side, we need to get rid of them. And the first one is the, the Black Lives Matter as a terrorist organization. You see it all over Twitter and I'm sure all over Facebook and everywhere else where people want to weigh in and they're, they happen to be on the right. And a lot of these people are just reciting, you know, what they've seen their, their favorite pundits say. The other one is Black Lives Matter is like the KKK. Now, I really shouldn't have to explain why both of these tropes are wrong, but for whatever reason, I do. So here goes. So really quick, just for the, the, the first one, the notion that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. Now, here's the thing. When I think of the word terrorist, and I, and I think I'm like most other people, when you think of the... Of, of the term terrorist or a terrorist organization, you're not thinking about Black Lives Matter. You're thinking about like ISIS. <laughs> you're thinking about like like uh, Al Qaeda. You're thinking like um, let, let's see. I mean, even some of the ones that we've had here, like the Weather Underground or, or Timothy McVeigh. He was a terrorist. Uh, even the KKK itself. That was a terrorist organization. Uh, Neo Nazis. People who pull off uh, right wing terror attacks. So it's not just you know Islamic terror. It, it can be domestic here as well. Um, but, but here's the thing. I mean, it's not a persuasive argument because it is very easy for people to see that it's not true. And this is, and this is the same kind of, um, uh, similarity that is with a lot of different lies that media tells on both the left and the right. Um, it's one of those things that only the people who already agree with you will believe. The only people who actually believe this are people who want to believe it, but there might be also some people who are actually persuaded here. So on the right. So the vast majority of those who actually chant Black Lives Matter when they're having protests, they don't approve of committing an act of violence for the cause. They're not participating in these activities, nor are they supporting them financially. They're not supporting them in their rhetoric. They're just saying, hey, Black Lives Matter. We don't like how cops treat black people. And again, we might have disagreements with them. We may have disagreements as far as the extent to which police brutality is impacting the black community. But these people are not terrorists. Um, so, so it, like, let's say if we were to com actually compare it to ISIS, the Islamic State, that's a we, we, we should compare it to a real terrorist organization if we really want to want to talk about this. The majority of operatives working with ISIS, they either actively engage in violence, they pro or maybe they or they do other uh, tertiary type of activities like providing weapons, uh, getting funding, recruiting recruiting members, or radicalizing people in other countries. As a matter of fact, most of the ISIS ISIS terrorist attacks that took place in the United States were people who already lived here and they got radicalized. So you've got people like that that help to radicalize and 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 
and do what they do. But the idea is that the overall objective of ISIS is to carry out terrorist attacks to promote their agenda. You don't have people in ISIS who are just like, well, I mean, I'm not really down with the violence part of it, but I do believe with some of the other things that they say. No, nobody, nobody who was in ISIS would actually say that because they all agree with it and they all are supporting it. Um, now, as far as Black Lives Matter, though, you don't see this. Um, there have been local chapters, local Black Lives Matter chapters, uh, off the top of my head, in Utah, in Chicago, and a few other places who have actually condemned the rioting and looting. But you'll never see that on the, on the media. And on the left, too, you will not see the corporate media on either side really push that. You can see that locally in local reports, but when it comes to... Um, the, the national news networks, you're not going to see them talk about that because they don't want you to know about it. They know that you're probably not going to dig deeper into this to see, oh, well, has anybody from Black Lives Matter actually condemned violence? So in that way, that's how, that's how uh, you know, uh, conservative-leaning publications and, you know, news outlets like Fox News, they, they are able to label Black Lives Matter as a terrorist organization and tie the violence to directly to Black Lives Matter, even though that they, they know that Antifa is very much involved in this. I mean, you watch that footage and you see mostly white people with Antifa uh, dressed in black and wearing the masks and the helmets and, and, and all that crazy stuff. So over the past few months, you've seen right-leaning media pretty much imply that most of the Black Lives Matter protests were violent. Now, some of them would say it straight out, but most of them wouldn't really say the words, most of these Black Lives Matter protests are violent. And there's a reason why, because they wanted to cover themselves, but they knew that that was the idea that they were promoting with the way that they talked about it. They would only report on the violent protests or the violent demonstrations. They would only report on the deaths or the injuries or the property damage that happened. They paid no attention to any of the, the peaceful protests. So, Here's the thing. The majority of people who are in Black Lives Matter are not supporting violence. But the objective, the narrative that they wanted to build, and that and they're still trying to do it, but the narrative that they're going for is Black Lives Matter is an overall terrorist organization and it is a threat to your safety. That's basically what Bon, bon Gino said. Todd called them a danger to liberty. So remember when that report came out, that showed that 7% of Black Lives Matter demonstrations were violent, while 93% were peaceful, you saw the reaction, and it was a visceral reaction. They, the right-wing media mobilized very quickly to spin that. Why? Because it flew in the face of their narrative. Now, if they had been saying from the beginning, hey, most of these protests are peaceful, but there's still a lot that are violent, that, that, that study that came out, they wouldn't have even had to worry about it because it basically affirms what they would have been saying. But the problem is that they were trying to get us all to think that most of these demonstrations were violent. So when this report came out uh, approving that wrong, they're going with, oh, well, 7% is still a lot. There's still you know, like 500 violent protests. Yeah, that's true, but you lied though. <laughs> you lied and you tried to get us to think that most of them were violent. And on top of that, you're trying to use those statistics in a way that, that proves something that, that doesn't really prove what you actually think it does. So, yeah, so and 7% is still too many, right? But you can't call it a terrorist organization if, it's, if only 7% of their operations, which, by the way, don't really even represent them at all. You haven't really proven that case anyway. You haven't proven that the entire organization supports that violence and is engaging in that violence. Now... Are there issues with the National Black Lives Matter organization? Yes. But calling them a terrorist organization, honestly, is stupid. I mean, anybody who's using that talking point is just reciting something that they've heard. They haven't actually thought about it critically. And I'm sorry if, well, no, I'm not sorry. But if I'm, I'm offending some of you, then maybe you need to be offended. Because if you believe this, then you've been sold. You've been conned. Same thing with the KKK talking point. And that one's, I'm not, I'm not even going to go that deep into it because it's just so obvious, obviously stupid that you should be able to figure that out on your own. But basically, I mean, we know what the Ku Klux Klan was. I mean, the organization, just like ISIS, the entire purpose of the organization was to oppress black people and to re oppress Republicans back then. So who, is, who, who, are, who are Black Lives Matter oppressing right now? Who are they going after? Is there a racial group that they're trying to target? Are they carrying out terrorist attacks? Are they lynching people? Are, are they dragging them from cars? Are they threatening them in their homes? Are they burning crosses? No. 
So the, the notion that Black Lives Matter is like the KKK is stupid. But again, I'm, I'm saying these things so that you understand, one, what Black Lives Matter really is, but also so that you understand that you are being lied to. And if you're watching this, you probably already know that, but at the same time, it's important to point this out. We can't just only assume that it's just the left-wing media, media that lies. Yeah, progressive media lies all the time, but people on the right will lie to you too. Some of them do it deliberately, and some of them do it because they've also been lied to themselves and they've been deceived, but we can't afford to fall into this, uh, what, I, what word do I want to use? We can't afford to fall into these distractions, th these red herrings. We're out there claim, claiming that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization when, in reality, if a lot of us, if we were to, set, to, to sit down with the average member of Black Lives Matter, maybe in your local chapter, yeah, you would, you would find a lot of disagreement there. But you would also find areas of commonality, especially if you happen to be a conservative who actually values liberty. Now, you're, if you're talking about the conservatives who are really status, the ones that will always, always defend the police no matter what, back to blue no matter what, yeah, those people aren't going to really have much in common with, 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 with somebody who wears a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. But for those of us who don't just back the blue no matter what, the ones who can actually see that when a bad cop um, when there's a bad cop who abuses his authority, he should be held accountable. Well, that's something that they have in common with us. A Black Lives Matter member, I mean, they, they agree with us on that. So why not focus on that rather than trying to demonize that person who, pro who would probably never even heard to fly? Yeah, there are normal people who are part of Black Lives Matter who aren't down with violence. The regular folks like you and I, where we might have differences. Or, but we also have a lot in common as well. So how should we respond to the writing and looting? I'm going to get into that. But again, just going to remind you, like, share, and subscribe. Please, please, please. Thank you very much. And, and basically, as far as the conservative movement, how should we deal with this? It's really easy. I mean, we're, I'm not talking about anything complex here. Let's just have some intellectual honesty. And let's follow our principles. Let's follow our principles instead of just expecting everybody else to follow our principles. We should step up and do it ourselves. Like I always say, principles over person personalities. And um, you know, I'm going to share a tweet that is an example of what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm not sure who this Francis Maxwell person is. I think it's somebody on the left, but I'm, I'm not really concerned about that. I'm concerned about what he's saying. You know, do you see the, the hypocrisy? in shaming the entire Black Lives Matter movement for those four or five or however many people that were in front of that hospital hoping that the, uh, the cops in there died. So we're going to smear the entire organization for those four people. Or we're going to smear 100% of Black Lives Matter protests because of what 7% 7, 7 of them did. Or, you know, 70% of the, the riots. or 7% uh, of the, the protests were violent. It doesn't make sense. A few morons protesting at a hospital shouldn't somehow make you see a regular person wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt in a different way. It doesn't turn that person into a thug. Yes, there are thugs, and a lot of them are white when it comes to, this, to what's going on right now over the past three months, but that doesn't mean that anybody who chants that phrase is a violent thug or supports violent thugs. So we have this principle that we're not supposed to judge an entire group by the actions of a few. So, do you, so some of you might remember the Tea Party, right? And uh, how mad did we get when the corporate media was taking what a few people did? Because there were a few people who made some racist remarks about Obama, and they used that to paint the entire movement. And how mad did we get? And here we are doing the exact same thing. And I know that we're in this whole uh, societal paradigm where we think that we should act like the left because they're doing it to us. I mean, it's really a childish way to look at it. It's not helping them. It's, I mean, it, it, this stuff is backfiring on them. But the fact that we're engaging in the same behavior is going to backfire on us as well. So, and, it, and it, it kind of brings up a question. You know, I listened to Sonny's, Sonny Johnson's broadcast from yesterday. I listened to it today because I wasn't able to do it yesterday. And she, and she asked a question. Uh, can we keep our principles and still be effective? And that's a great question. And the thing is, not only are, can we... Not only can we be effective and keep our principles, we can't be effective without them. How are we going to try to get people to buy into our ideology when we have no principles? Are we even trying at this point? I think a lot of us are, but a lot of us are not. So here's the reality. 
Not all of Black Lives Matter is Marx's propaganda designed to promote the far left's agenda. That's it. Yes, this is true about the national organization. If you go on their website, you'll see it. But a lot of the local groups and the rank and file, they don't necessarily co-sign all that stuff. Now, maybe in some cities like where I live in Austin, if I were to sit down with their leaders here, their local chapter, they might have a little bit more in common because Austin is very far to the left. I love Austin, but it's very, pro it's very progressive. Hopefully we can change that. But, and, but in other areas, I mean, there's Black Lives Matter local chapters all over the country. And, um, and there have been some that have, e have even uh, criticized, you know, all the Marxist propaganda in the national organization. But really, these are just people who want to make a difference. They, these people don't want no policing. These people don't want to abolish the police. They just want to be policed the right way. And they'll tell you that. I mean, th the polls show it. I mean, if you look at the polls, like, what is it? Like, 81% of black people do not want to see l fewer police in their neighborhoods. That tells us something. That tells us that we shouldn't be judging all of these people by the actions of a few. And we definitely shouldn't be judging the attitudes of the black community by what white progressives are doing in Portland. It doesn't make any sense. It's not rational. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. And we need to be smarter than that. For those who, for people who don't really care whether the conservative movement stays predominantly white or not, this isn't for you. But for people who actually want to see us become more diverse and to see us open our tent, we have to, we may get this stuff, but we, but we also need to, we also need to make people aware of what our media is doing to deceive us. It, I mean, I, you see me calling it out all the time, but it can't just be me. I know there are others, but the more the better. Because if we demand better from our corporate media, they will be forced to oblige. They will be forced to shift their thinking. And as we change more minds on the right, which is happening, again, and I, I always talk about the negative, but there are a lot of attitudes changing, especially when it comes to issues of race, when it comes to issues of police brutality and, and other in other areas where the conservative movement has historically fallen short. It's changing. It's not there yet, but we're, we're working towards it. And um, you know, I'm hoping that with the work that we that we're all doing, that we can get the conservative movement to let go of this boomer con mindset that we've been using and this approach that we've been using for decades that hasn't worked. It's been an utter and dismal failure and there's absolutely, there's absolutely no chance of it succeeding. You know, um, and I'll be talking about this as well, but they had the Solutionary Summit yesterday, a Maj Teres event. And I'm, and I'm sure I'm, some of you guys went there, some of you guys saw the live stream. Um, you know, Olivia Rondo was there, Felicia Killings, uh, uh, Lawrence B. Johnson, though, that's just a few of the people, Judge Joe Brown. And from everything that I've heard, and I will be watching the, the playback, but from everything that I've heard, it was a productive event, especially for it being the first event. That's what we need to highlight. And the people on that stage are working just like I am to bring more awareness to the right about these issues so that we can finally see the change that we need if we want conservatism to remain relevant. So I just want to, I just want to uh, leave you with that. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, hit me up on Twitter at Jeff on the right. Um, remember like share and subscribe, please subscribe. Um, I want to, you know, get more of my audience here on YouTube and not just on Twitter. So, uh, definitely appreciate, appreciate you watching. If you have any feedback again, or any questions, uh, hit me up. You have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.